was our family and friends welcome to the work nation our nation of factory truth where we feel free to share knowledge and spread the knowledge of factory truth without fear without favor and without faith where we encourage us to live our lives and live it well through the knowledge of factory truth because it is our lives and personally i encourage you to enjoy your life it is yours to live you were not born to beg. You were not born to worship. You are not born to believe. You are not even born to create. You are born to build. Because they give us that uh, creators or creation mentality. And we, so that's why some of you say we are gods. No, we are not. They say that God, English, is someone or something that creates. We are both gods. We are builders before they came up with the concept of God. And um, one of my main mission or reason I'm doing what I'm doing is to wake our people up, to know ourselves, come to our true knowledge. Before there was African spirituality, there was African knowledge of nature, African knowledge of science, African knowledge of technology, which we use to build everything people are enjoying all over the world today. Okay, so today I'm sharing with us what I titled Selling on Empty Promises. In other words, living in bondage. When you are living by faith, you are living in bondage. When you are living in hope, you are living in bondage. When you are living in love or by love, you are living in bondage. When you are living a humble life, you are living in bondage. You are not living your life. When you are claiming to be spiritual or to be religious or to, you know, no, not be carnal or not be natural or that, you are living in bondage. When you are living by morality or you say you have morals, you are living in bondage. Okay. And that's what I want to share with us today how people that say they believe in God, people that say they are spiritual, and they are believing certain words, which are empty words, empty promises. Okay, so, and, uh, you know, the more these people um, live, the more they keep living in that hope or faith or love of their illusion, the illusion and hallucination. So you see them still believing that what they believe will come to pass, what they hope for will materialize, blah, blah, all that. But it's not like that. For example, I have lived such life before. I was a Christian. I was a minister of the gospel until the knowledge of factual truth delivered me. So you have to doubt to deliver yourself. I doubted everything, every pattern, every race they said before me. And today I'm living my life humanly, using my brain. Remember, there is no force greater than common sense. Engage your brain and nobody will take advantage of you. So let me start as a, uh, Christians always believe, like in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20, if I'm still correct. He said that their God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all they ask or think think about that that's why you see them living in bondage and call it the hope or belief or love that promise of god because their book tell them their god think about that if god if their god is able to do exceeding abundantly above all they ask or think why are they working anyone that tell you you should pray and walk. They are not telling you the truth that they say Jesus taught or their God. If you have to pray and walk, then you are confused because if prayer works, you will need to walk. And if work works, you will need to pray. So like people myself, like people like myself, we don't pray, we walk. We don't pray and walk. We are no longer confused. We are woke now, so we are against everything that's called us to believe. Like I said yesterday, they say sin is believing, but they taught you to believe without sin. 
You're supposed to see first. Although when our people say seeing, they didn't say seeing is believing. It is English people that say that. Our people mean seeing is accepting it as it is. When you see something, you accept it as it is. Before you accept it, you must you might have gone through it and make sure it is real. Nobody buys invisible product unless in spirituality or in religion. You see people paying money for product they have not seen. I've seen some ministers today preaching that uh, Elon Musk or those people that are rich in the world, they are not rich by prayer or that be, 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 be they are, the product they have. Now, that rich pastor, that rich minister, that rich man of God, that rich woman of God, that rich uh, whatever it is, whatever religion it is that claim to, to be blessed by God, what is the product they're selling to people? Invisible product, product that does not exist, but merely based on empty promises. And you see majority of people today living or selling in life on empty promises, managing to live on empty promises. They, uh, they, they are victorious by claim, not by, 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 by reality or maybe what they can actually have. So they keep believing because their God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all they ask or think when it is not real. They have not received anything from God. He say if they pray, and believe without that they will receive he did not say they will walk to receive he did not say they will beg to receive he said if they pray and without doubt they, they if they believe they have received it he said they shall receive it so it is later they begin to add a walk and pray uh, faith without work is dead bullshit but the, the, their word of God, if their God is omnipotent that can do all things, they don't supposed to work for God to provide for them. They don't even supposed to pray for that God to, uh, to, to, to uh, take care of them. Also, the same way Jesus said that, Jesus said that if you pray, you, you will receive it, right? So you don't need to walk. There's no way you can use the Bible to prove to me that God wants you to pray and walk. No. That's why there are a lot of contradictions there. Because if you show me one place, you base that. I will show you more than one place that contradicts that. But think about that. If God is all-powerful, why are you walking? He cannot provide for you. So understand that, my people. Also, in a place like Ephesians, I mean, Philippians chapter 4, verse 19, he said that, you know, God, God, my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory, not according to you working, not according to the economy of your country, not, uh, not, not according to whatever effort you put in. He said, God, God, his God will supply all your need according to his riches in glory. Remember, he said also, you should not uh, bank in this world but in heaven by giving it to the poor not by building church not by supporting men of god no by giving selling all you have giving it to the poor maybe i will speak on that later about all these people confusing themselves with god and nonsense investing in godly in god in the kingdom of god and all that okay so how about the same philippians chapter 4 verse 13 he said i can do all things through christ that strengthens me you can do all things. So what are you doing with your CVs or resume? If you can do all things, to go and work in any company without resume, without qualifications, do it through Christ that strengthens you. Let us see. It's impossible. But they keep living on it. They are selling on empty promises, living in bondage. How about Mark chapter 10, verse 27? He said that with men, it is impossible, but not with God. For with God, all things are possible. What are the things that are possible with God? Mention one, zero. There is, an, there is nothing that is possible with God. Everything you see around you is possible with men, not with God. At least use your own life, for example. Without men, you won't be here. Without your mother and your father having sex, you won't be here. God did not create you. You are not here because God sent you from anywhere. 
nowhere. How about Jeremiah 33, verse 3? He said, call me, I will, sh I will, I will answer you and show you great and mighty things you know not. But you see them going to school, you see them studying. Their God is not showing them anything. After prayers, they still have to go study. After prayers, they still have to go learn from people. God is not teaching his children anywhere. They say that God will teach his children. I think it's uh, Isaiah chapter 50, 54, verse 13. He said God will teach his children. It's also mentioned in, in Hebrews, but it's a lie. There's nowhere God is teaching his children. Go to Bible schools, go to theological schools, go to their Bible classes, go to their religious uh, schools and all that. It is people teaching they are not any God. No God is teaching them anything. God is not answering them and showing them what they don't know. They don't know nothing. You say, no, they do. Oh, they are prophet, true prophets of God. Ask them, where is the, where is the Malaysian airline that got missing? Till today, how many years now? No God, no anointed man of God has been able to say, okay, this is where that plane can be found. No way. Both all the lives in them, all of them, boom, disappear like that. How about John 14, 14? Jesus said, yeah, whatever you ask in his name, say will be done. But it's a lie. They, they have been asking, it's not working. Look at what just happened in Nigeria, especially to you Africans. How long will you continue believing when you are not seeing nothing? They pray, they decree, they tell you, no, Peter will be, that's who God shows, you know, Peter will be, must be there, he must be the next, blah, 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 empty words. And that's because that's what they used to gather the crowd. That's what, what the crowd want to hear. I'm not among those crowd followers or crowd pleasers. I can never do that. It doesn't matter what it is. Selling on empty promises. So number one empty promise I want to speak on today is God is with you. Uh, God be with you, I'll share with you. God is with you. It's a lie. God is not with you anywhere. There's no one with God. There's no one. No God can possess you. No Satan can possess you. No spirit can possess you. No soul can possess you. There is no God with you. There's no spirit with you. You are above all that. So when they give them that promise and you see majority of our people living on that promise that God is with them, that died in accident, then they will blame it on driver or on themselves. But when those things, are not, there's evidence that no God is with them. They say, no matter how, blah, blah, blah. They make noise or that God is not with you for anywhere or for any reason. There's no God anywhere to be with you. Number two, they say what God cannot do does not exist. That's the new one they have now. But before that, what God cannot do doesn't exist. They will say, so long as I have God or so long as I have Jesus in my life, I need no one else. Which is land. When they sick, they rush to doctors. They rush to hospital. God use them. No, you say it. If you have God or have Jesus, you don't need anyone else. You don't need anything else. Why are you going to people in your time of need? So when you say what God does not exist, does, what God cannot do does not exist, you are stupid. And many of our people are echoing that empty word and they are praying. You see them even in America. They are sending money to that criminal that coined that word. What God cannot do does not exist. And it was during even COVID-19, I think, that guy made up that word. And they will not learn. COVID-19 killed many Christians, killed many Muslims. People that are prayerful, it closed down Mecca, closed down Israel, Jerusalem, closed down Vatican. It closed down everywhere the name of God is, is worshipped. COVID-19 closed it down. Yet people still summon the courage to say what God cannot do does not exist. They are even suffering. Some of them have not, they don't have money to pay their school fees. They don't have money to even take care of their, or what it takes to take care of their children. Yet they believe what God cannot do does not exist. This is the person that is praying and hoping that he will get open door financial breakthrough. Yet he saying what God cannot do does not exist. You see them going about looking for job, 
to begging people for money, begging people for help, then they insist what their God cannot do does not exist because they are st uh, stupid. Uh, number four, they say there is power in the name of God or power in the name of Jesus or power in the name of Allah. It's all lie. There's no power in any name. There's no power in any name. Unless you're talking about like uh, uh, somebody that is in a position of power. The way they can, you can, with their name, you can go get a job somewhere, or maybe you can bail somebody out just because of their name, because they are the one in power. But there's no power in the name of Jesus. That's why you see Christians in prison. There's no power in the name of Jesus. That's why you see theists, people that believe in God, Muslims, in hospitals, in prison, in places where they are suffering. If there is power in the name of their God, they won't be that place in the first place. They won't even have that problem because they would have prayed. Uh, uh, Yerebo said that his God would tell him that, uh, you know, before before the need arise, the supply will be there. I say, I think he said that God said that to him through Archbishop Benson But you know it's a lie. All his need has been supplied by his followers, the church members. He's taking their tithes and the offerings weekly. So how can he, just like Adeboye too, if he say uh, he need 1,000 people to give him 1 million, they will rush and give it to him. Now, 1 million times 1,000, you know how many millions it is. But he will come out and say that God is the one supplying his needs uh, because I gave into the ministry of Dahosa, and he said that I will not lack. That's why I'm not lacking. No, you are not lacking because you are robbing people. You are slain from people the same way Archbishop Benson and Dahosa did or every other man of God, uh, man of God that came before you. There is no power in the name of God. There is no power in the name of Jesus. You are sickness, you are disease, you are suffering, you are conditioned. That has condition or your family problem should teach you that also. Number five is heaven at last. Oh, especially you see many of our young girls in the choir singing it, heaven at last. You see them believing it. That's why you see them dress like elderly people, why they are younger, because they believe this nonsense, heaven at last. This nonsense nearly destroyed me. You need to see me when I was living heaven at last life. I don't care about my body see pimple all over my face. I don't invest in my clothes or anything about me. Well, everything I was investing in, in the things of God, kingdom of God, you know what they teach us. So I give to people. I, I, I don't care about myself. I just do nonsense. Heaven at last. I want to be like Jesus. I want to meet the Lord. <laughs> Everyone that preach, they will meet the Lord. Look at them. If they have passed 40 years, you see they are not meeting any Lord because Long life is supposed to be 40 years. And if they're up to more than 40, there's no Lord they're meeting. Those champions of Holy Ghost, uh, I mean, holiness preaching and the salvation preaching, all of them are liars. They're not preparing to meet any Lord. They're preparing to build houses. They're preparing to have children. They're preparing to buy cars. They're preparing to enjoy their life. But they tell you they're preparing to meet the Lord. When you, when you read the Bible and see the true people that are preparing to meet the Lord, they don't have anything. Jesus told his disciples, for you to qualify to be my disciple, you must leave everything. And Peter said, we have left everything and follow you, Matthew chapter 19. He said, if you actually leave those things and follow me, he said, in the generation, not now, in the heaven, you will receive hundredfold. But you know, it's all lie. Number seven, or number six, he said, God did it and God will do it again. Now, when you hear believers telling you that God did it, they are quoting what is in the Bible or in, the, in their Torah or in their Quran. They, it's not in reality. Their God has not done anything in reality. Then if you tell them what their God has done in reality, they will say he gave them life. God did not give you any life. Life is not a gift. Life cannot be created. Life you are always being. Your parents did not give you life. You came through them. You did not come from them. You always exist. You cannot end. You cannot perish. So when they tell you repent or perish, they are lying. Understand that God did nothing and God cannot do anything again. 
That's why God, you believe God provided for people in the Bible. Then God provide for you in reality. Let's see, it can never happen. The seventh one is you are loved. Oh man. They tell you that lie that you are loved. You are not loved anything. And that word means if you are loved, you have to be submissive. You have to be a slave, like women. Women want to feel they are loved in relationship or in marriage. Prove to me you love me. Show me you love me. Even some of them get upset if you don't say with your mouth, I love you. <laughs> Come carry me now. I don't love anyone. I care for people that care for me. That's humanity. That's how we must live. Love comes with law. And law is bondage. That's why love is evil. It's anti-nature. It has nothing to do with reality. So you are not loved. Anyone that says they love you, watch it. They are lying. Their love is fake because it's fake feelings. Love, that's what you tell to women to have sex with them or what you tell to people to rob them. All those uh, people with a sweet tongue, like Cadillacs, some Cadillacs, how do they sell you bad cars? It's with sweet tongue. Oh, I care about you, man. I want to save you some money, you know? Just give me a little money. This car, no problem. Oh, you will buy. For 10 years, you will not have any problem. You think, wow, this guy is saying the truth. Some of them even give you some drink or meal to eat. Then after you buy it, or go to Alaba market, or whatever but people are doing business, you understand what I'm saying. How they will show you like they really care about you, but it's your money that are targeted for you to buy these goods, for them to make profit. That's all that matters to them, not you. Number eight, they also say that empty promises. It is your special day. <laughs> Especially when they say it's your birthday. Uh, maybe you are celebrating one anniversary. No day is your special day. Every day is special day to you. And those of you that are claiming that your birthday is your special day, whatever day you are celebrating that birthday is not your birthday. Your birthday has passed. You can never have two birthdays. And there is no day you are celebrating as a birthday that is the day you were born. It's not. You don't even know the day you were born. It's what your parents told you or what they say in your certificate. That's what you take. What of if they lie? But why are you celebrating your birthday? Were you supposed to, uh, I mean, one, one time in a year, out of the 365 days, you only have one day, say it's your special day. Or maybe Mother's Day, your special day. Whatever day they made up for you, is special day for you. How about your, it's not even the day you yourself made up. And after you claim, no, I am, I am not a slave, I am free. I, I know the God I'm serving. No, you don't. You stupid. There is nothing like special day. Okay, every day is your day. And all you have in this life is day. Live your life. Day, whether it's night, whether it's in, 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 the, in, in the daytime, is day. Live your life. As I used to tell you, yesterday, today, and today, they are one day. You know, it is you that is saying, yesterday is different. Today, tomorrow will be different. No, they are the same day. Whatever decision you make in them, you live with it. Whatever choice you make in it, if it has consequences, you must face it, whether you like it or not. How about another lie? In everything, pray. Or they tell you in everything, give thanks to God. This is one of the lies that be making people live in bondage. Somebody died in their family, they say, we still give thanks to God. I mean, like somebody that is young, die like that, or die of sickness or disease. Instead of them to blame that God, why he didn't heal this person? Why he didn't at least help this person? We put a lot of money, a lot of effort to save this person's life, but this person died. And instead of them to blame God, they give thanks to God. Why? Because... Their book tell them in everything give thanks to God, or uh, in everything pray. You see, you say you have problem. The first thing they will ask you: Have you prayed? Have you prayed? Especially those ministers. That's the first thing they will ask you. But when they have their own problem, you don't ask them: Have they prayed? They are. Uh, they say they have problem. You ask them: How much do you need? How much will it cost to solve the problem? And you begin to bring the money for them to solve their problem. But your own: Have you prayed? Let us pray. 
Give thanks to God. God be with you. See you on Sunday. <laughs> they are evil. Also, they tell you, number 10, no matter what, there is God. You, have you heard that? Even people that say they are doubting things, what people are saying or doing it with, in God's name, they still tell you, I still believe there is God. I say, yeah, you're right. You say you believe. You didn't say you know. You believe because you don't know. Then you choose to be ignorant. So why are you living and about to die in ignorance? You need to know. So they say, no matter what, there is God. Saying no matter what, there is God will make somebody like me to shut up. It will make me see you as somebody that, that is intelligent. It shows that you are still stupid. After all you are suffering, after all you are, you are facing in life, in reality, you still say there is God. No matter what, there is God. Even if he don't answer me, there is God. Even if he keep my, uh, everyone around me, there is God. Even if he don't supply my need, there is God. That's the empty promise you are living your life on. You are living in that bondage of there is God. How about unbelieving? He said, God is not a man, which is a lie. Your God is not a man. When you read your book, you say your God is a man of war. <laughs> yeah? Your God is not a man, but he has all the characteristics of man. He got head like man have, eyes like man have, hand like man have. And you say your God is not a man. Man is above your God. Okay. Also, they say that like, um, number 12, man is nothing without God. You see them disgracing themselves, humiliating themselves for a God they have not seen. I am nothing without you, Lord. Nonsense. Oh, more of you, less of me. Nonsense. You are cursing yourself. You are destroying yourself. And that's what faith, the hope, and the love of God does. It is, when you say you believe in God, it means you belittle yourself. That's why you will say you are nothing without God. When you are somebody, when you are greater than God, God cannot do what you are doing. God cannot do it. Tell me one thing God, God can do that you cannot do. Tell me one thing. Mention one. He said God can do that thing and you cannot do it. I will prove to you that you can do it and God cannot do it. Number 12, he said man is... No, no, I think I've said that, right? Mm-hmm. God is not a man. Then another one day we say number 13, nothing past God. Oh, I think I didn't say number 12, right? Man is nothing without God. It's a lie. Man is man without God. And God does not exist without man. Man made God. Man made God. Every God. And the worst God that man made is the invisible God. At least the visible God you can see can help you, you can use it. But the invisible God is the number one lie they use to deceive the whole world. Telling you God is you cannot see God, they say created you also. How can God created you? I mean, God created you yet you cannot see that God. It's like telling me I cannot see my living father or my living mother. You are stupid. They gave back to me their life. I must see them no matter where they are. Especially in this time, we have smart, uh, smart, uh, smart technologies. You can do video chat. No matter where your God is, if your God cannot do video chat with you, that God does not exist. That God you say is really exists, but he cannot do video chat with you or have even life service with you. All this life service you are doing in your church, your pastor will be preaching, you'll be looking on the screen. Why can't that God conduct that life service with you? But you will claim, as he is in heaven, so we are in this world. You are lying, and you are a liar. Man is great without God. I am greater than God. And God does not exist without man. Number 13, they say nothing past God. You will hear them say, who can battle with the Lord? Who can battle with the Lord? Who can battle with the Lord? I say nobody, stupid. Even that book you are using to claim it, read Judges chapter 1, verse 19. It tells you that people of Judah, although God was with them, they could not de de defend the people that were living in the plain land. Because they had iron chariots. Just as God failed to save the Jews from uh, Hitler in Germany. 
as God failed to save all those Christians and Muslims or those things that died during COVID-19. And they're still dying today in hospitals, in accidents. You say nothing past God. Come on. You pass God. Everything about you, but even you are shit, pass God. A pass God. Pass God. God cannot do it. God cannot give you air. You can do that yourself. He cannot. There's nothing God can do for you because you pass God. You don't need to wait on any God or for any God to do anything for you. Another lie they live on is the book is holy word of God. Oh, Bible is the holy word of God. Quran is the holy word of God. Torah is the holy word of God. They are all lies. No book is holy. Oh, I say, yeah, it's holy. It means it's evil. Because being holy is being evil. Yeah, they are evil. Yeah, they are holy. <laughs> they are evil. But think about that. Telling you that a book is the word of God and then you are living by it and this God is supposed to be alive. Why can't you hear from your living father but you are waiting for his will? The only time you will hear from the will of your father is after his death. And for the fact you call your Bible or Torah or Quran the will of God to you, it means that God is dead. You don't read the will of somebody who is alive. No. The only person that can read it or change it is the person that wrote it. But you, this, the, 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 maybe the surviving family or whatever it is, you, you, are, you, are, you cannot read it. Even the lawyer will not allow you to read it until the man is dead. Say this book is the word of God. Liars. There is no such thing as word of God anywhere. Number 15, they said, oh, God can fix it. Oh, God will fix it. Oh, Jesus will fix it. Oh, Jesus, take the wheel. And that's why they die in accident. Because Jesus take the wheel. They cover the, blood, the driver's eye with the blood of Jesus. They end up in accident. <laughs> no God can fix anything. Before you complain against any politician or any government or any king or any authority that they are not serving the people, they are not helping the people, how about the God you and them are worshipping? Why can't that God help you people? Why, can, why are you not blaming God? If there is God, you that believe there is God, you don't need to blame any man or any woman for any wrongdoing or, or injustice in the land. You're supposed to blame God. Where was that God before that injustice, before that um, oppression? Where was that God? If there is God, he's supposed to be able to fix it, but God cannot fix it. Somebody say that, you know, what prayer did not uh, prevent, prayer cannot solve. Uh, the same way, what your God did not prevent from happening, your God can never solve it. That's why I see people going from one prayer house to another, from one, prayer, uh, one man of God to another, from one spiritualist to another, because there is no God fixing anything. And the you that is doing something, saying you are doing spiritual thing, you are a liar. You are a physical person. You cannot do anything spiritual because spiritual is a lie. It does not exist. So if there is spiritual, I am not. I am natural. Don't share with me spiritual things. I want natural things. I eat food and water. I don't live by faith. Number 16, he say, it is the will of God. Oh, yeah, that's their signature. Their fellow... Christians or their fellow Muslim or their fellow believer dies. They say, hey, it is the will of God. Who are we to question God? <laughs> who are you to question God? So who are you to worship God? If you cannot question God, then you cannot worship God. If you cannot question God, you don't supposed to do anything in the name of God. You must be able to question the God you, you worship or you serve. And if that God cannot answer you, all you have is it is the will of God. I don't, you may not know how God was. He was in a mysterious way. You are a liar. There's nothing that is the will of God. Whatever you are doing, you are doing it either according to your own will or the will of another human being. It's not any God. So why can't you do your own will instead of doing the will of God you have not seen and you cannot see that God? 
do your own way, decide what to do. There's no power that will stop you if you decide to do that. Even if they kill you, you will come back and continue. Just because you have decided to do it, you need to know how powerful you are as a human being. You are both God. You are both goddess. You are both spirit. You are both soul. You are both whatever they tell you, this thing is, is, is above you. You are above that. They are limiting you with such empty promises or lying words. The last one I want to speak on, number 17, is God has a plan for you in life. Jeremiah 29, verse, um, nine, verse 11, right? Yeah. He said, I know the plan I have for you, a plan I, have, a thought I have for you, a plan to give you what? To give you hope or future hope, all that. That's all you can have from God, future hope. God cannot solve your problem. You only have hope. You only have faith. You only have fear. You only have love. You only have humility. I mean, those things that don't, don't matter in reality. Those things are for slaves. And that's what they made you. They made you slaves in the name of God. You were enslaved in the name of God. So it's time you wake up and trash everything God. God has no plan for you. God cannot help you to sell in life. God cannot help you to live freely in life. Every concept or idea or belief in God is being, living in bondage, is keeping you in bondage. Wake up and try them all and live your life humanly. God in.